Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can enable users of your Webflow website to be able to create new CMS items from a form. So if you've been impacted by Webflow sunsetting their logic feature in 2024 and we're using logic for similar functionality, this is a great alternative solution for you that is super quick and easy to set up. So in this example, I am creating an events platform where users are able to post new events. And as you can see here, I have this form that is fully customizable in the Webflow Designer, even the rich text editor. So now if I just jump over to the live version of this page, I've already filled all of the different form data for the event that I would like to create. Uh, and then I've also added in a description for the event. And you can also add a bit of formatting here inside of the rich text editor, also added an inline image. So now if I just click post discussion, what's gonna happen here is that a new CMS item is going to be created with all of the data provided in the forms. So if I just jump over to the CMS item, you'll see it here. And as you might've also noticed, I also got redirected to the published version of the CMS items page. So this solution doesn't just have to be used for events. You can also use it for something like a forum, like in this example here, or you could use it for a job board. Uh, like in this example, or you could also even use it for creating something like a product hunt or medium clone. Um, so yeah, whatever you were using Webflow logic for, there's lots of flexibility here. So yeah, I'm just going to briefly show you how to implement this. And this solution should only take a couple minutes and it doesn't require you to piece together a bunch of different no code tools and create a bunch of complex automations using a tool like Make or Zapier. Okay, so first off, we're just going to use a tool called SuperSparks. And the first step is to select the CMS collection that you would like to create new CMS items from. And then afterwards, you're just going to select a field for the rich text. Um, this would also work for uh, basic text inputs, um, but most of our components come pre-installed with a rich text editor. Um, and then afterwards, we're just going to select a text field, which will be the title or name of the CMS item. Okay, then afterwards, we're just going to click save and proceed. Then afterwards, we can select from four different variations of a rich text form. So the one I'm just going to select is the unstyled one. Then after selecting it, I'm just going to paste it to a static page. So this is a page dedicated for creating new posts. So actually, I'm just going to create it. And then after pasting it in, I can get started styling everything. So let's just select the parent class. And then yeah, as you can see, we can adapt the styling of all of the different inputs and even the layout and also the interactions. And then if we just proceed with the installation, we're just going to copy this code snippet. Then we're just going to add it into the head tag for the page settings of this static page and then click save. And then afterwards, we can also add in some optional CSS overrides that just ensure there's spacing between lines in the rich text editor. And then the next step is to select a component. And this is just for displaying the content that users provide uh, inside of the form that we previously pasted to the static page. And then we're just going to add this to the collection template page for the collection where new CMS items are being created. And then we're just going to connect the elements to their relevant CMS field. So in this element, we're just going to connect it to the rich text field inside of the CMS collection. Then we're just going to connect this one to the name. And then our tool just dynamically displays the author details of the post uh, based on the data they provide inside of the form. Or if the user is logged in through a tool like MemberStack or Outseta, data from their profile, such as name or profile image, will get displayed with their content, like in this example here. Okay, so now that we've done this, there's one last step. So we're just going to copy this code snippet and then paste it into the collection template pages head tag. And then if we click save, we can now get started testing. So first off, I'm just going to add the name of my CMS item. And then I'm just going to provide my name. And then the email address will not be publicly visible. It will only be visible inside of the SuperSparks content dashboard. And now I can get started adding some rich text. So I can just bold this and then I can also add in an inline image here. Okay, so now if I press submit, the CMS item will get created and then I will be redirected to the published version of my CMS item page. 
So now if I just go to the CMS collection, I can then find the post that I just created. Okay, so now I'm just going to quickly show you how you can allow users to reference a CMS item from another collection when creating a new CMS item from this form. So first off, we're just going to go to the post category extra feature inside of SuperSparks. And then the first step is to select the reference field. So I've already gone through the process of referencing another collection for categories inside of the main CMS collection where new posts are being created. Okay, so now the next step is to select this and then click save. And then we're just going to go through the installation process here. So I'm just going to copy this attribute. And then if we just go over to the rich text form, I'm just going to add in a select input here. So one important detail worth noting is to make sure that the value for the different choices matches up with the slug for its relevant CMS item inside of the reference collection. So as you can see, I'm just pasting the slug for funding advice here. And then if we just uh, jump back to the collection, we can just add in all of the additional choices. So I'm just going to add the one for no code. Okay, so once that is done, we can then add in the attribute to this select input. And we're just going to give it the value once since this is for the first CMS reference slot. So you can reference up to two collections inside of your form. You would just repeat the same process for the second reference input inside of your form. Okay, so now I think we can get started testing. So I'm just going to publish these changes. Okay, now that we've published, if we just go to the static page with the form and create a new post, select a category from the reference collection, and then press submit, we will be redirected again to the published version of the CMS item page. And then if we just jump back to the CMS collection, you'll see that a post was created and the category that I selected in the dropdown is being referenced. And then if we just go to the CMS template page, you'll see that I've already connected the reference field to a element on the page. So, so yeah, this is really just scratching the surface of what's possible with Webflow's reference field functionality. Uh, so if we just jump back to the forum example, you'll see that individual pages are created from the collection template page for each topic slash category. And then posts for those different topics slash categories are being filtered on this page. So this is great for SEO. And then if we just take a look at the job board example, you'll see that we're doing something similar. So individual pages where all of the jobs for a certain type of role are being listed on that page. So in this case, it's all of the sales roles that are being listed here. Um, so lots of flexibility here. Um, and then, yeah, I think we can jump now to the functionality for adding in different custom fields to the form. Um, so if we just jump back to the form and yeah, this will allow you similar functionality to what was on display earlier in the video for the date and then location input. So you can add up to seven custom inputs of your choosing uh, that are text-based into the form. Okay, so I'm just going to show you how to add in a text input. Uh, so if we just move this up here. Okay, so I'm just going to call this location. And then if we just jump over to the CMS collection, I'm also just going to add in a custom field dedicated to location inputs. And then if we just jump back to SuperSparks, we can just go to the installation steps for custom fields in the extra features library. And then we're just going to select the location text field, then click save. And then the process is quite similar to the setup for categories. So we're just going to, again, add in a custom attribute here. It doesn't have to be required. Um, and then we're just going to set the value to one. You can also use the first custom field slot as a date field. Um, so in order to set this up, you would just add in a custom field instead of a basic text field. And then you would add in the following attributes so type date. And then of course our attribute for custom field one. And then you could also add in an additional selection for the time. Um, and then of course, if you were planning on using a date 
input, you would want to link this to a date field inside of the CMS collection. Um, so yeah, I'm going to provide a link in the description for a more detailed tutorial for setting up dates. But for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to show you how to add one basic text input. Okay, so now that we've done that, um, you would also follow the same steps for configuring all of the additional custom text fields that you would like to add into your form. Um, but yeah, after publishing, we can then see this in action. Okay, so let's go back to the form. Okay, now if I submit, I am once again redirected to the published version of the page. And then if we just again jump back to the newly created CMS item, you'll see that the text input that I provided for the custom field is getting synced into the CMS field for location for the newly created CMS item. Okay, so yeah, you can repeat that process for up to seven text fields of your choosing. Okay, so now if we just jump back to the collection template page, we can also add in the location data here. So I'm just going to add in a text element, and then I'm just going to connect it to the text field for location. And then if we just go to the post I just created, sorry, I've been using the same title pretty much. Uh, but yeah, as you can see here, we can now display the location on the pages for the different CMS items. Okay, so there are a few additional features worth mentioning slash settings. Uh, so you can configure a webhook and notify a callback URL of your choosing whenever a new CMS item gets created and relevant data will be included inside of the JSON payload. And then there are different moderation settings you can add to your site. Well, actually just two, um, but uh, for example, as you might've noticed, uh, new CMS items are automatically getting published and the user is getting re redirected to the published page for the CMS item. But if you were interested in adding a layer of triage before new CMS items get published to your website, you can definitely do that by selecting manually approved. And then if you just jump over to the content dashboard inside of SuperSparks, um, well, first off, you will be notified um, or you can make it so you are notified whenever a new CMS item gets created on your website and then you can jump over to the content dashboard where you can review the newly created posts and then publish them to your site and then you also have the option to unpublish them. Okay, so in the previous examples I showed you, I was creating posts as a logged out visitor or as a guest, uh, but if you were interested in enabling the memberships functionality that I showed you inside of the forum, also this is what's set up for this job board here. Um, so this is being created by logged in members where the company's profile image and name is being displayed with their content. Um, and then I was also kind of messing around with this on the events platform. So yeah, this was actually created by a member. Uh, so yeah, in order to set this functionality up, uh, you can just follow the instructions provided inside of the membership section of the SuperSparks editor. So I'm not going to show you how to implement this in this video, um, but I will provide links in the description with more detailed tutorials for how to set this up for each individual tool. Um, so Webflow memberships is also being sunset, so just be aware of that. Uh, so Webflow memberships will stop working in January of 2026. So, so we highly recommend using MemberStack or Outseta for this functionality for creating new CMS items or user-generated content. Then the last thing I wanted to mention, if you were interested in setting up similar functionality for another CMS collection, you can definitely do this. So you can just go through this process again and all you have to do is go to the home page and then click add sparks and then you're just going to select community posting and then you're just going to select the from scratch method and then if we just go through the slideshow here we'll then be able to select another cms collection where we would like uh, cms items to be created from a form on our website the great thing is you can even reuse the same components you previously installed, uh, but just make sure that they are separated, ideally on separate pages. Um, so when going through the installation process, you don't have to copy and paste new form and post content page components. You can just reuse the same ones that you previously installed for the first configuration of SuperSparks. Also keep an eye out for a new feature we are in the process of adding for allowing your users to upload an image inside of the form. And then whatever the user uploads can then be synced into an image field inside of your CMS collection when the 
CMS item gets created. So yeah, as you can see, there is so much flexibility here. Uh, do not hesitate to reach out to us at hello at supersparks.io if you have any questions or need any help transitioning over from Webflow Logic to this solution. And yeah, thanks for watching and take care.